Now, my next guest, he's an accountant, so he's going to get a good view. We're going to get a good view on this from him. Uh, he's going to tell us what he thinks is going to happen next, I, I hope. But anyway, let's bring him in anyway. It's going to be Dan Geltrude. He's America's accountant. Dan, thanks for taking the time today. You know, we were off air. Uh, it's frustrating. Um, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but it seems like the market ignored all the signs until there was nowhere else to hide. And finally, their last thing that they were kind of hanging their hopes on was that jobs number was always very, very good and everything was just fine. And when that one kind of went and, the, the, you know, the, they turned the, the, the man behind the curtain showed up. How about that, Scott? The, all of a sudden, the emperor has no clothes, right? So, look, historically, August can be a challenging month for the markets. But who saw this coming? I don't know. Maybe you did, Scott, because certainly uh, Wall Street caught up to what Main Street has been saying for a long time, which is people are hurting out there because of inflation. And look at the trends, right? Savings accounts down, credit card debt up. What's that tell you? Now, of course, I don't know exactly what happened between last Wednesday and Friday, where all of a sudden everything that we thought was wasn't. But the stock market, Scott, is about the long game. So to me, you have a giant overreaction. Now, this may be where we're supposed to be, but it's not supposed to happen within 48 hours. Right. So what, I, what I've been telling people is, listen, hold your positions, wait for the market to stabilize, because it will, before you start reallocating everything. If you do that, you'll be okay. If you want to sell low and then buy high, well, I don't think that's a good formula. No, and you know, and, and this is a little bit disingenuous, but I'll, you know, because I'm, I don't like it, but you know, if you have a three-year time horizon, you're, you're probably going to be just fine. Um, these things will recover and come back, and that's why I think I don't like equity brokers as much because the Fed has been so accommodative all the time, and they put band-aids on these things. So you don't really have to be very good. You just as long as you've got a three-year time horizon as a broker, I just tell my customers, yeah, just buy it, buy it. You don't have to be smart. Just tell everybody to buy it. But, but if you do go back and look at a, a, a chart of the S and P 500, Dan, going back to 1970, you clearly see where well, the Fed took that real accommodative turn in 2008, 2009 for the last uh, great financial crisis. And so that gets me to my next point, real quick. We got to learn to let the market get hurt and skin its knee and skin its elbows and heal on itself rather than constantly come in with more money, fiat money, a Band-Aid for this and a Band-Aid for that, because we're never solving the problem. We're only solving the symptom symptoms. What say you? Well, I agree exactly. Look, it, what are people calling for now? An immediate rate cut. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and by doing that, again, let's look at what's really happening. If the Fed actually does do a, a cut before the September meeting, you know what that tells me? We have bigger problems than anyone knew about before. Because to me, that's a risky move. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing right now. Look at what's going on in the Middle East, Scott, right? They're on the brink of war there between Israel and Iran. Now, oil has been holding pretty steady, even coming down. If Israel makes a, a move on oil production facilities in Iran, game changer. Oil goes up and inflation on the run again. So the Fed's got to be careful to all of a sudden give everyone the sugar high today or tomorrow. They have to be able to sit back and, as you said, let the market bruise its knees a little bit. Yeah, I, I, you know, because we get this scenario where you're too big to fail, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay back your student loan, don't worry about it. I mean, that type of attitude permeates throughout all of society. And I'll leave you with this. This is what I heard on Wednesday. He stood in front of, uh, you know, God and Sundry and said, without saying it, that we're going to cut rates in September, right? He, he nibbled around the edges. He was trying to be transparent, let everybody know what his thoughts were, a few, a little bit more data, we're probably going to be cutting in September-ish. He didn't say it quite like that, but I'm paraphrasing. Here's what that, to, that says to me. You go to your doctor and you say, I don't feel well. He does a scan of your body. He says, you know what? You got an infection. You're right. Uh, I've got an antibiotic at Walgreens for you. Just pick it up on the way home. And when you do get home, don't start taking the antibiotic until 60 days from today. <laughs> that is what I heard. And that's what I think the market kind of punished him, I think, for that on Friday a little bit. Because that's ridiculous. Either it's bad enough to cut now or be quiet and stop with your transparency. Ten seconds to you. We got to go. 
Listen, the Fed decided they were going to jump in and try to control everything. So you know what? There's no escape. It's on them now, Scott. I agree. All right. Thanks for coming on, Dan. Awesome to have you on. Great, uh, great segment for you. Dan Geltrude, see you again next week.